today, uh, Coach, um, I just want you to know that uh, we were gone, of course, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, here in the States, it was 9-11. Uh, so we uh, decided that we weren't going to have a show that day uh, so that we could respect others that needed to have that day. And uh, we're back today. But I, I step out of the way now. Show's all yours. Ah, oh, what a gentleman. <laughs> Give me the great, the great intro and then just slides out of the way. <laughs> That's because everybody was telling me, what happened to Jess? What happened to Jess a couple of weeks oh. ago? They were like, what did you do to Jess? And I go like, no. hey, guys, it was 9-11, mm -hmm. guys. They were yeah. like turning on me. I was going, what up? No, we wanted yeah. to leave that space so that we could, again, respect all those affected. Yes. Of course, yeah. yeah. Make sure but people they, that they were going to beat me up. They were going to beat me up. They were like, we need to get you security. And, uh, yeah, I was like, <laughs> she's coming back. Calm down. I was like, <laughs> good Lord. Oh, I missed everybody too, though. <laughs> I, I missed the passion that everyone here and everyone that comes through here has to, I don't know, improve their life, make, make their mental health better, and just, you know, spread awareness and become more aware of the mental health stuff that other people are dealing with and what they have to go through. What do you got for me today? <laughs> well, a couple of things, actually. Um, the last time we were talking about coping mechanisms, uh, I think that was two shows in a row we talked about that. So today, I want to talk about that in a bit more of a practical way and uh, relate that to seasonal affective disorder, which is something that comes into play for a lot of people in the fall. Um, as we transition, see, my weather topic is related. <laughs> uh, you're trying to recover, as we, huh? As trying we to transition back. into... you trying to uh, bounce back. Of course, I always do. There's no try. I was just doing. There it is. Um, yeah, so talking about that and how that affects a lot of people and uh, just being more aware of that, especially if you already have mental health issues or relationship issues going into the fall, um, can be a bit more difficult for some people uh, the end of our last show as well i remember uh susan uh, or tutti pooper she was asking about yeah. some some bullying uh topics and questions about that so susan if you are uh listening now if you want to just feel free to write your question or topic uh request whatever you feel like it during this episode feel free we can transition into a bit of a chat about that as well um, as always, I would love for each and every one of you to join my Facebook group. Um, it is called Better Than Okay, and it's all about mental wellness, all the stuff we talk about here. But through that group, you can have access to me every single day. So uh, I do my best to post on there daily. I haven't been doing that the last few weeks. Again, I've been outside enjoying the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> and our sporting activities that we can't get to do in the winter. So I will be doing a lot. I more guess I got to get there. outside. I guess I got to get outside. Is that what you're trying to tell me? You guys have sun for a lot longer than we do. Uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, Trisha, Trisha has uh, is here, boss. Uh, the Hi, art Trisha. for Annie is here, and everyone, please, I encourage you to go to the Pack Coach. Uh, the that's uh, the underscore p dot a p dot C dot underscore the pack coach is also here as well so thank you everyone for for joining us thank you for everyone that's joining art for annie trisha uh share unbound uh leave underscore no underscore contact underscore go underscore ghost ah, i think i went one or two shows and i didn't say it like that and i felt <laughs> out of place when the show Aww. was over with yeah so i just love saying the whole thing uh she's here as well share uh knocked it out the ballpark a couple of days ago with her show on uh, narc abuse tv ebony Juling Julwing is here as well uh thank you ebony for being here um uh appreciate the heart uh from you leave no contact go ghost uh, alex stern uh alexis uh okay i'm tearing it up i give up uh, i appreciate all of you and I apologize for ruining your names if you come on. Uh, time for me to uh, step aside again. Coach, just wanted to let you know who's here. And uh, go ahead. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. I think we're trying to um, make sure we are keeping track of those who come through here so that we can uh, talk with them after the show so we can reach out and uh, offer that 30-minute free coaching session with me. Um, please DM me. Uh, the name of the Facebook page, 
Uh, it is better than okay. If you want to find it, uh, Barefoot Island Mama, I love that name, by the way, um, go to my Instagram profile here and in my link tree, just click there and it will take you right to that uh, Facebook group. So you can just join through there. And uh, there is a, <laughs> what are you I'm laughing sorry. about? I'm sorry, I should have turned my mic off. Go ahead. No, nope. <laughs> I'll tell you in a minute. Just keep going, please. <laughs> I can't it's believe so I did that. I should have turned my mic off. Go ahead. Just keep going. I'm like, am I just saying nope, something ridiculous? Nope, you're doing great. <laughs> just keep going. Really, seriously. Okay, I'm going to no tell worries. you it's my bad. Go ahead. No, no, that's okay. No worries. Um, yeah, so join the Facebook group there. There's an offer for a free guide when you join that Facebook group as well. So please do that. Um, and again, everyone that is in the audience that participates, um, whether publicly or contacts me privately, you're all entitled to 30 minutes free session with me. And that's on top of the 30-minute consultation that I always offer uh, for new clients. Uh, please also make sure you follow that Facebook page I just mentioned, at Life Plus Coaching. That is my uh, business Instagram page and where I am most active on Instagram. My Canadian accent came out there a little bit. And um, that, that Facebook group, please join me there because that's where I do um, a lot more trainings. And I provide a lot of resources and more information there, too. And it's a wonderful community to connect with others who are um, passionate about uh, promoting their own positive, healthy, and safe mental wellness. Uh, so, yeah, please check all of those things out. Uh, and I would love to see you in all of those places. Paxton, what are you laughing at? All right. Obviously, <laughs> the, the high school diploma that I paid for... <laughs> That I paid those, all those teachers, all those aluminum cans that I saved money for. Oh. <laughs> I obviously cannot read because I'm glad you you said the proper name. It's Barefoot Island Mama. Mm -hmm. What did you think it was? For Max? approximately maybe two weeks, if not longer, maybe at least two weeks, I've been saying Barefootsy Mama. <laughs> there is something wrong with me that I cannot read. I know I, I know how to read. I help my children to learn, to learn how to read. And they read quite well. They're actually multilingual. And I didn't help them with That's that. Incredible. That's incredible. And I'm just like, that literally says Barefoot Island Mama. What is wrong? <laughs> That's why I started laughing. Thank you for saying it correctly. That's pretty cute. Because she I'm never like, corrected me the whole Aww. time. I, I butchered her name for like two weeks. All right. Anyhow, I just. Our all audience right. is too sweet. That's it's pretty It's our first funny. show back, everybody. We have no common sense. Excuse me. I have no common sense. Back to the flowing, beautiful hair of Coach <laughs> Jess. <laughs> and I will sit here and practice That's with actually, Sesame Street. Sesame Street to make myself better. <laughs> so, it's funny that you talk about that because sometimes when there's a lot going on or we're in the middle of doing something, our brains will fill in the blank. So, you know, when you can like scour a paragraph and speed read and you can just pick out words, our brain will do that with one word sometimes and it really? will you know, cause us to read something different or or uh, process it differently than it actually presents itself. And that's just our brains trying to be efficient. And sometimes they're a little too efficient. I was just thinking right now, maybe it's because I, I don't live too far from the beach and I always walk around barefooted. And, barefootsy. And could I just think barefootsy? Yeah. I think that should be a line of t-shirts. Barefootsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody out there should do that. What are you, what are you that are listening uh, all, all two of you that are still here with us, no, just, just, <laughs> listen, somebody should make a t-shirt line called Barefootsy. Yeah, I like anyhow, it. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I love seasonal, it, I love it. Is, is it seasonal, what is it? Seasonal Affective Disorder, and the acronym is actually SAD, so it's pretty easy to remember. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's basically when your mood goes down based on the uh, the change of weather pattern outside and it's usually very common from the end of the summer to the beginning of the fall and winter uh, it can also happen though when you're moving from different environments so if you're moving from um, you know very hot warm sunny place and now all of a sudden you're in a gloomy uh, gray sky cloudy area with lots of rain it can have a really big effect on your body and there are a lot of different reasons for it um, first and foremost is lack of vitamin d that is a simple biological medical explanation, right? Um, so what I wanted to do with our discussion of seasonal affective disorder today is incorporate the coping mechanism and coping strategy discussions we had the last two episodes to show oh, you kind of okay. a practical way 
of mm. dealing with an issue like seasonal affective disorder um, with with coping strategies that you can start and practice and integrate before you're even dealing with the issue itself. So with seasonal affective disorder, again, lack of vitamin D, that's one of the biggest issues, one of the biggest problems, and that's one of the biggest causes of us mm -hmm. feeling that seasonal affective disorder. Um, so what is the solution when you have a lack of something and you might yeah. need a little bit more? You can add it into your diet. You can take supplements. There's so many options for getting vitamin D into your body. You don't just okay. have to rely on the sun anymore. So um, that is something you can do is talk to your doctor, of course, if you're on other prescriptions or other supplements and mm -hmm. see what is a safe amount of vitamin D for you to supplement with. Um, vitamin D is very important for things like calcium absorption and other things like that. So it's not just seasonal affective disorder that you'll be helping yourself with. It's going okay. to... Um, improve other areas of your health as well. So talk to your doctor if that's something that you notice is your mood goes down quite a bit as the season changes. Talk to your doctor. Find out um, if you're able to do that for yourself. Just to, again, make sure it's something that you're getting on top of before it starts to affect you. Because once these things start to affect us, it's harder to take a step back and do the things that we need to do to get back to that place where we felt stable and regulated before. So you want to make sure that you're doing that so that you're seamlessly kind of transitioning. Oh, vitamin D, dangerous for older generation. Um, I have not heard that vitamin D is, is of any um, harm to anyone. Um, I, I believe it is a, I believe it's a water-soluble vitamin. So I, I could be incorrect, but I don't think that there's such thing as taking too much. But again, talk to your doctor. Um, anybody who has any issues with their health, anybody who's in a generation that thinks it, it may be harmful to, you know, older people, just double check with your doctor. I am not a medically trained uh, doctor professional of any sort in the medical field. So um, I don't want you going and taking anything just on my own advice. Check with your doctor. Well, a as a professional, I've often played on uh, radio and uh, on Instagram. <laughs> I just want you to know as a professional, I know how to Google. So I will go. <laughs> I love me some Google. I we should have sure a we do. should have a live Google chat where people just that say something cool. and everybody Googles it and they got like ten seconds to come up and find something and then just start talking about it. That would be pretty uh, cool. Actually. A Google like a Google live chat. Google just, round just, robin. Yeah, it's just you know nothing nothing particular. Just hey, look, I looked that up and it says this, and it you know well you know can't always trust the internet. But uh, thank you, Cher, for highlighting that to us. As something we need to keep in mind. Uh, um, let's see here. Let's see who others name. Uh, someone else's name I can mess up. Uh, uh, Sam uh, Ali ninety three, which I probably just messed that up right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Sam is here. Uh, pos positive vibes. I'm pretty much what I'm saying. It's probably tearing that up too. Is here. Uh, Art for Annie is still with us and share. Uh, for some reason or another, share says laugh out loud. I was really serious about having a Google thing. I think Cher should be a part of it. I think you and I and Cher and Art for Annie and we could get Sam and we could get the Barefootsy, no, Barefoot, <laughs> Barefoot, <laughs> Barefoot Island Mama and Alex and others, all, all of you guys. We should just have one group chat where everybody gets out their phone or, or their laptop and we just pick a word. I should that get a big wheel. Funny. I get a big wheel or a big TV monitor behind <laughs> me. And I just randomly stop on, I have it go, and then I pick a word, or I or write it out. Have, we could have suggestions from our audience, and then we could just there you have go. Them, put them on the There wheel. you go. <laughs> there it is. We should, no, we should do that with your like show, that. where they just pick a subject for us, and everybody gets a turn. We get at That's least five a people. a cool idea, actually, yeah. I'm and everybody that. takes a turn, and then they pick a word, and then you got to <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> Perfect. No, they just, they just go like, uh, depression, and then you got to talk about it. And you talk about it for a little can, bit, and then can you that. can do that. You can do oh, yeah. that. And then we turn right around, and we pick another word, and everybody would get a turn. And we would tell people, if you want to participate, before the show starts, you have, like, five days uh, to send us an email that you want to participate. And don't tell us your word, because it's got to be all live. It's got to be random. We don't want to be prepared for it. Nope. And then they just pick a word. Now, if they pick a word that is obviously not friendly to instagram and a family show we will not do it so True. don't waste don't waste your turn i'm seriously i'm thinking about doing that 
<laughs> do it. Do it. That would be fun. I think fun. I'm gonna like I'm mental, gonna produce that. I'm gonna put that. Go ahead. Wellness improv. Look at you. Look at the creativity <laughs> from Canada. Man, this Canada California connection is working, dude. Right. Mental what again? Say it again. Mental wellness improv. There we go. That's the name <laughs> of the show, guys. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put it together. Okay, so I'm Please counting do. on. Let's see who we got here. I'm counting on Anastasia, uh, Art for Annie, uh, Share, be a part of it. Uh, and anybody else that wants to be a part of it, no pressure, no pressure. Uh, anybody else that wants to be a part of it, this is what you this is what you can do. We just made this up. We just literally just made this up. But I think between you and I. And with, oh, yeah. hey, we can make this work. We can totally make this work. Definitely. We should do this. I, I know you have the shows uh, planned out or scripted per se uh, as to what you're going to talk about. Consider this since it's your show, boss, that maybe the next time we do a show, that's what we should do. We can do that. That's like everybody would have two weeks to mm -hmm. pull this together. I'm literally, we're doing this in real time. Like right now, we're seriously doing this right now. I love it. But you can look at the behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is well. Hey, this saves us from having our meeting. We were trying to ha schedule. <laughs> we're having it right now in real time in front of everybody because we're supposed to have oh a show goodness. meeting. Let's just do it right now. No, no, we I can't. There's it. other stuff. There's other stuff we're going to talk about. We can't yeah. talk about now. But uh, share Unbound if you'd like to join us and Art for Annie uh, if you'd like to join us and anyone else. Of course, you're you're more than welcome to do this. Send an email to our production company. It's Rhythm Entertainment Productions. So that will be Rhythm Entertainment 85 at gmail.com. That's Rhythm Entertainment 85 at gmail.com. Send us an email that you want to participate in. What's the name of it? Mental Wellness Improv. Mental Wellness Improv. So if you'd like to be a part of that, just send us an email. What we're going to do is we're going to collect the names and we're going to look to see you two weeks from now on a Saturday at one o'clock. And we're going to use one hour and five minutes to, to, to literally have a round robin of just words that are thrown out that are in the mental health community. And we just talk about it. We just literally just improv and just literally just sit here and we talk about it. Now, one of the things that I, I want to do, uh, Coach, since this is all spur of the moment, <laughs> is in that show, I am going to have a phone number that individuals can call in on. We'll just test it out. Uh, you can call into the show, and we will pipe in the sound through, through of course, uh, Instagram, and everybody will be able to hear you speaking. And uh, you can participate that way. You can participate, uh, of course, by typing and texting your answers and comments there. So, uh, oh, wait, Tim is in. Wait, Tim, the roots of empathy. He says he's in. Perfect. Okay. So remember, send us an email at rhythmentertainment85 at gmail.com. Rhythmentertainment85 at gmail.com. That's our uh, in our production company. That's uh, our production company, my daughter's. And uh, we will make a list for everyone that will be participating. Now, it will be open to everybody else that just happens to come by. Once they figure out what we're doing, and we'll tell them. <laughs> but mainly, the show is going to be driven by Coach Jess and everyone else, Tim, uh, Cher, and uh, Anastasia. Hopefully, Anastasia is still here. Uh, and and uh, anybody else that would like to participate in two weeks from now, we are going to have, what is it again, Coach? Mental Wellness Improv. <laughs> we are going to, we just made it up, everybody. So if you're just getting here, you're going like, what in the world are they talking about? <laughs> Well, you probably do that anyhow if you come by and see both of us. <laughs> so we don't. <laughs> we we started this off by not knowing exactly what we were going to do. Uh, well, you did. You knew what you were doing. <laughs> I know what I wanted to do, but you knew what you were going to do. Uh, so we're going to have a mental health, mental, what what is it again? <laughs> mental wellness improv. <laughs> I have no idea. We are literally this is this is actually like a show prep meeting between you and I. We're You're just, so good uh, at just typing uh, the just, accent. I'm so no, excited. I don't know about <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know, this is better than starting a religion. But what I was gonna say is I mean, at least I'll be telling the truth. But what I was gonna say is <laughs> I was just <laughs> This, is this why we get none of our, this is why our meetings don't get anything done? We just sitting there goofing off the whole time. Okay. We just, so we giggle a lot. All right. So we come up with good ideas though. But we didn't come up with this one until right now. This is a really good idea. Um, We're so going to have this, this improv on mental health. 
and everyone will be able to drop a word in, and then everybody will talk about it for a little bit, and then somebody will drop another word in. Everybody will get a turn to kind of like be the host for that day the next time we come on, okay? Even though it is the Coach Jess show, and if you don't do what she says, she will cancel you, <laughs> or, or she'll fire you like she threatens me a lot of times. I would never. Hey, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. All right, so we were going to talk about being sad, <laughs> but now we're being goofy. But that's, the, that's the antithesis. It's perfect. Back, back to you. <laughs> back to you, boss. Go ahead. No, that's wonderful. That actually is a really good transition into the next thing I was going to say because um, another really, really big risk factor for seasonal affective disorder um, is the fact that we start seeing each other less when the seasons change. So we isolate ourselves a bit more. It, the weather gets crappy. Oh, my God, I'm back to weather. I, I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> Obviously. It's this big window I'm staring out of. All I can see yeah. is that. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> you you need to you need to talk to your local station to see if you become their weather girl. That would be pretty good. It's raining. <laughs> we are not supposed to be just sitting here laughing like we're having some private, you know, show prep meeting. We're supposed to be trying to share information oh. that would be encouraging and positive. That's so true. <laughs> if there's anybody out there that's still listening, uh, <laughs> please send me an email to their production company and uh, we'll go from there. But if anybody's there, just wave at us right now to make sure that, that we have not thoroughly okay, lost <laughs> everybody. And they were like, these people are crazy. Just just well, say hi to us. Just let us know that you're still there. All right, go ahead. You go just ahead. need you need to have friends like Paxton and I, right? Like you need people <laughs> that are that. gonna make you giggle. You need <laughs> to have people hey. who are gonna encourage you to do things even though it's you yeah. know, it's it's yeah. dreary out or, yeah. or wet or raining or cold. Hey. I ain't got no right. money, but I can be funny, honey. I ain't got <laughs> no money, but I sure can be funny. That can be worth a lot more. All right, than go that. ahead. You were going to say, <laughs> you can say, boss, go ahead. All I'm saying is just you need to have people around you. Like, don't let the weather keep you inside. Don't let the, the cold temperatures keep you from going to, uh, you know, out for what? Like, here in Canada, it gets pretty cold. We go snowshoeing. We go cross-country skiing. Like, there are things you can still do outside with friends, right? So I'm not sure what the restrictions are like in the different states there, but um, things are opening up a bit more now here in Ontario because of the vaccination rates and things like that. So um, we're, you know, we're able to go out and do a, a, a bit more here. We can go and see people now. We can, uh, we can have friends around. We, we don't have a limit on a number of people that we can have in our homes or anything anymore um so it, it's really it's sticking with your family and friends it's having those loved ones around so that you can call somebody when you're feeling lonely you know have a games night you know have a have an adult yeah. hot chocolate evening there you whatever go. you need to do right just just surround yourself with people who care about you because if you don't notice you know that your mindset or your attitude or your emotions are getting negative your friends and your loved ones will, and yeah. I hope that they are genuine and they, they would say something if that's something that's going on. So that's another protection against the risk factors for seasonal affective disorder. Um, and like I said, preventing something is so much better than having to deal with it when it actually happens. So taking these precautions, being proactive about it, um, is going to not only prevent this stuff from happening, but then when you see what you've been doing for yourself, to make sure that your emotions stay regulated and stay positive uh, and stable, that's going to increase your confidence in being able to regulate your emotions further down the line. You're going to be able to see that the things that you are doing to maintain a positive mindset and um, make sure that you know you're cared about and loved and connected with others, doing that for yourself, it's going to improve your emotions and your mindset and your attitude just tenfold. And again, when you see that your actions can have that kind of an impact on your mental health, it's, it's really phenomenal the confidence that that brings. Because you know now, you know, when you're having a bad day, you can actually do something to turn that around. When you're having a bad week, you can actually do something for yourself, uh, get together with your friends or, you know, have a nice spa at home day, something like that, where you can make yourself feel important and valued and worthy and loved and doing all those things for yourself. Uh, it, it puts your 
mindset into your own hands. When you rely on someone else to give you those things, it makes you codependent on someone else. So being able to be independent about your mental health and your mental wellness is huge, right? And so if you're going into the winter or into the fall and you already have mental health issues that you're dealing with, you're going to want to be even more proactive about this. Um, this is especially true if you're going into the fall or the winter in, in an unhealthy relationship or a toxic relationship because the winter time, especially here in Canada where it gets very cold, it, it does get very isolating. You do end up spending a lot more time with people that are close to you physically, uh, geographically, um, mm -hmm. and that sometimes means that you're in the same house with someone, that one same person, for extended periods of time. Um, you need to make sure that that relationship that you have, that main relationship is as healthy as possible. And if it's not, make sure that that is not your only source of support. Make sure you have friends and family and let them know how things are going. Let them know what's going on with you. There is that, you know, that crazy case right now that everyone's talking about, that Gabby Petito case. And, you know, from the outside looking in, tragic, tragic loss of a young woman. Um, outside looking in, you know, people notice some controlling behaviors and things like that, but nobody thought it would end like this, right? So it's just another reminder for us to check on the people we love and care about, right? It's another reminder to make sure that what we're seeing is genuine and that's what's also happening behind closed doors. Not that, you know, you're responsible for saving everybody from everything but your attention can help your attention can help someone um, it, it can help if you're noticing things that maybe they're not noticing have those conversations those difficult conversations and so going into the winter if you are in a place where it gets very cold and frigid and freezing make sure you have more support than just potentially the one person you're living with right especially if you have children in the home especially if those things are to be considered make sure that you're not alone and isolated when it comes to um when it comes to situations where there is abuse uh, when it comes to situations where there is tension uh, and there's there's strife and there's tension and there's conflict being isolated can seem like well this is what i need to do to keep the peace it's to keep me from being abused even more. But the reality of it is, based upon what you're saying, isolation can lead to some really detrimental things, but we may need to make sure we're connecting ourselves with people who are looking out for our well-being, making us feel emotionally safe. So what are some things um, that a person needs to be mindful of if they can't connect right away what should be maybe some of the things that they can put into play to protect themselves uh if they're at home and that person who's difficult is there whatever the label may be narcissist or whatever it may be toxic uh, like you said toxic difficult person what are some things an individual can keep in mind uh if they can't have somebody that they can reach out to right away I would suggest it, it, it's going to depend, obviously, on the degree and the level of abuse, the degree and the level of um, the emotional, physical, uh, mental abuse, whatever it is that's going on. Um, my first recommendation would be if, if leaving the house makes things worse for you, have a place in the house that you feel safe, maybe some, some place that you can lock a door, um, some place where you can put something in front of the door if you need to someplace where you can feel protected and safe and and able to do what you need to do without fear of that person coming in. Now, again, those things might also be triggering for that person too. So again, it, it's so specific per situation. It's so difficult to just give general information on these things. Um, I know there are several websites where you can go to for uh, domestic violence, domestic abuse, um, helplines or or uh, internet web pages. There is one in particular. I think it's the National Domestic Abuse Hotline in the in the U.S. There, and I think when you're on that website, all you have to do is hit the space bar, and it 
closes it all down or it takes you to another website or something like that. So it's something mm -hmm. that you can be on and doing research and looking for information and support in your community without fear of that person sneaking up on you because it's just kind of one touch and it goes away. I know mm -hmm. there are also some different kinds of apps you can get for phones that uh, when you download them, they look like something else. So that if your abuser or someone who is controlling you has your phone, they're not going to see that you're looking at mm -hmm. a domestic, uh, domestic abuse help information app. Um, mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things that you can do where, um, where it's, you're going to get the information that you need, but there's less risk of that person finding out. Um, oh, you got Sharon, someone on the screen. You. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you so you much someone. for sharing that. Did you want to read that's, that, Paxton? Uh, that's, that's actually very helpful. Um, mm -hmm. uh, share unbound, uh, share underscore unbound, if anybody uh, like to take a look at that. Let me get myself turned around here. It says, I crocheted because was not allowed to lock or close doors. Uh, it's very soothing and allowed me to process. Uh, so that's very helpful. And also Cher also highlighted earlier when we were d talking, laughter is a perfect antidote uh, for the uh, SAD, the, the, the seasonal right affective that's disorder right. you were talking about. But in regards that's to this situation, uh, she mentioned that was something that she did, crocheting. Maybe some of you are here uh, or you may know of someone if you have any suggestions to pass on, because this show will be watched by others later. Uh, and just so you know, many individuals download these shows and don't watch them on Instagram's platform, and they watch them off of a third-party app via a third-party app. So feel free to uh, pass on information uh, so that they can also maybe uh, get some encouragement and positive uh, thoughts from that as well. Uh, Coach, back to you. Yeah, please, please absolutely always add anything that's held to you or any suggestions you might have or any questions. It's so helpful to have this show as more of a conversation and a discussion rather than me lecturing up here for, you know, the hour that, that, that can become tedious and difficult to talk to or to listen to. So if you're wondering why we like to break it up a little bit and throw in some laughs and silliness, it's, uh, we just want to make the topics a bit more manageable and a bit more digestible. And this way it's easier to process the information. Um, as opposed to having just super, super heavy, um, heavy topics that come in and then just filling them with, uh, you know, psychological terms or things that you might not understand. So we really want to make this an accessible show. We want to make it so that everyone who is watching and coming through um, feels comfortable and welcome and, and able to share their thoughts with us. So crocheting is, is fantastic. Share anything that you can really be doing with your hands when you're not necessarily able to be physically active in other ways that can be very very soothing very comforting so any kind of arts and crafts really um, especially if you just need a small space for them like crocheting um, mm -hmm. but knitting is you know kind of along the same lines sewing you mm -hmm. know I have a friend who does needlepoint and it's very calming for her um, the artwork that I like to do is is very calming for me but I need quite a bit of space for that so <laughs> really no yeah, yeah. I do uh, epoxy resin pours on Ooh. on canvas. Yeah, it's really fun. I should put some pictures up on my Instagram sometime. You know, yeah, you might want to share that on your uh, on your Instagram. Um, so I'm curious to ask ask you this: Did you start that out of just creativity in itself, or was it a part of dealing with or recovering from uh, previous trauma? It was one hundred million thousand percent recovering from my trauma it was I never really felt creative in the traditional sense I can't draw I can't paint and I, obviously I can it, it's something that everyone can do but I can't do it very well I can't do it with many um, established techniques I haven't really learned much about that kind of stuff and so I wanted to be able to go into something that uh, would allow me to be creative in my own way without having such a defined term for whatever it yeah. was I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I found, it was really funny actually how I found this medium. I was looking at uh, these rings that I really liked and they were completely clear and they had like one tiny little flower in it. I thought they were so beautiful and I wanted to learn how to make them because um, mm -hmm. I couldn't find where to buy them. And it was, they were made out of resin. And so I started looking up resin crafts and things like that. And, uh, came across these 
canvas pours. And I don't know if you've seen those like um, those pour paintings where people take a cup and they just put a bunch of different paint in it. And then hmm. they like have it upside down on the canvas and they take it off and then it flows oh. all over it. You mean oh, I could have been an artist this whole time <laughs> in dealing very with abstract. life's challenges? By Oh, man, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so you can do it with paint. You can do it with paint for sure. But I like to do it with um, epoxy resin. So epoxy resin is uh, chemicals that end up hardening into a very hard, tough plastic. And it kind of looks like glass almost. So it's a very shiny finish. And so I've been practicing just like having different things that I add into it and uh, different techniques for pouring or different ways because you have to cure it afterwards. So you have to basically go over the whole thing with a flame to make sure it cures properly and all the bubbles come out. So technically, <laughs> okay, everybody. All right. <laughs> the truth comes out. She does it to play with the fire. Okay. Come on, you guys. That's why she's got all the red. Ch seriously. It's not what you think. It's not like it's just the color she picked. Look at her face, everybody. Look at her eyes. She knows it's the truth. Before she could finish, she, she knew. Listen, the little pyro in her came out, guys. That's what it is. Hey, you can incorporate pyro. things That's like her therapy. that into craft. That her it's, <laughs> do you know what the most therapeutic tech or the most therapeutic thing about it, Paxton, is before I started doing this, I was such a control freak and very, very, very stressed about going out into the world i was basically i, I was very much um, agoraphobic at this time in my life and it was very difficult for me to leave the house it was difficult for me to do anything or see anybody unless i had full control of the situation so this acrylic resin pouring it doesn't cure for about 48 hours so it's literally still moving when you're done and so mm -hmm. you have to give up that control and walk away and let it do its thing, and you come back to a completely different art piece. Like it, it's, it's incredible. And so I always... it helps you. It helps you to work through that process of having the urge, I should say, more or less having the urge to have control. Yes. Yeah. The more like when, when you're doing things and moving things around, you can only put them in such a position for so long. They will keep flowing and keep moving. So. You really can't leave some like you can't leave it and be like that's how it's gonna look because in 24 hours it's gonna look different and once it hardens the colors are also different so you're really putting a bit of faith in yourself and your the products you're using and the idea you had in your mind and what it's gonna end up looking like. So essentially, the resin responded the way life and situations develop. And people and people we can't try to control life or situations and circumstances unforeseen occurrences things take place and there could be literally as the majority of things out of our control except our reaction to them same thing with people whether they're quote unquote as we were talking about earlier you were highlighting toxic or so forth we may be stuck in the house with someone who is not well the best company to keep uh, but uh, what share what share say share said uh, crochet mm -hmm. <laughs> so and you said what you work with uh, yeah, resin well any you. any artistic medium I think is something that allows you to process and it just it takes you out of your head right it takes you out of your mind like when I'm doing my art stuff like I'm not thinking about how to solve all the problems in the world I'm not mm -hmm. you know I'm just focusing on what it is I'm doing in the moment and especially with resin as well so i didn't mention this part you also have about only 20 minutes to do what you want to do with it before it starts to harden and you can't actually work with it anymore so you have a time limit to work with it and then you just have to leave it alone 20 so minutes it's, yeah it's very much i don't know it really taught me that things can be beautiful even when you can't control everything you know in about 20 minutes it, you know like if somebody has an urge for something if they just wait 20 minutes it usually goes away so 20 minutes is a very important time frame. So if anybody has an urge to smoke a cigarette or take a drink or they just want to go eat that whole entire thing of, of donuts, don't do that. Send the donuts to me. I'll take care of that for you. But the other stuff, no. But when it comes to that 20 minutes, you recognize what you had no control. You had to literally wait. You can 
add some structure. You can add the colors you want. You can move it around and pour it where you want. But ultimately, you only have 20 minutes to have your effect. And then it's going to do what it's going to do. Uh, so you equated that to like dealing with people and circumstances and situations. If right. we feel we have a loss of control, life, a uh, loss of control that pretty much if we let it take its course to a measured degree, we're probably going to end up turning out okay. Yeah, I feel like, you know, it's healthy to want to have some control over things. It's healthy to want to have some structure to things. But if you're going about life expecting it to conform to your plans, that's not going to happen. Right. We can have goals. We can have plans. We can have things that we want to get to and want to do. But there is always going to be something that gets in the way. There's always going to be something unexpected that happens. And if there isn't, then you're not playing big enough. You're not you're not putting yourself out there big enough. Right. You need mm -hmm. to be willing to fail and make mistakes and have to, you know, redraw the plans um, mm -hmm. in order to be successful because things are going to stop you. And, you know, you are only going to have a certain amount of time to do certain things. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you if you trust that you're doing the right thing for you and you're being genuine to your values and your beliefs and your morals, then, you know, nothing's going to be able to take you out of those because that's what your commitment is. That's where you're holding true. Right. And you just put those ingredients into the situation. You're going to end up with, you know, getting getting what it is you need or want out of it. And that might not look like what it was when you first went into it. There is uh, there's something on the screen for you there, Coach. Uh, yeah. For some of you who have just maybe arrived, much love to you for being here. We have been gone for a while, uh, for a few weeks, uh, because 9-11, uh, we wanted to make sure to not uh, have a show that day out of respect to others. And so today is our first show back, uh, episode number six. I did not do my uh, normal intro today. So I'm going to take a moment and say, welcome to the Coach Jess Show, episode number six. Episode number six. Okay, I just had to do that. All <laughs> right, so uh, some love to Wonder Woman who is here, Sabine, uh, as well as uh, Anne, beautiful Anne, has uh, joined us, or at least has passed through, and Cher, of course, is here. NPD, Recovery Red Flags, uh, is here, along with others that have passed through I just wanted to say this name for sure. Go away, come back. I love that name. Uh, I, I don't believe I know who you are yet, but I'm going to find out. Go away, come back uh, is here. Joy lives in hope. Hi to you. I didn't mean to uh, go so long without saying hi. Um, uh, hello back to you. Thank you for passing through. Or if you're still, he still here, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to mess up somebody's name. Uh, uh, Tab <laughs> I'm going to say Tabitha. Uh, Big Girl 35 is here. I should know what that is. I've already spoke with her. Uh, Toma K 1217 uh, passing through as well. Shay Shay just showed up. How did I miss that? Shay Shay just <laughs> entered the room, everybody. Uh, Shay Shay 3178. Uh, all of you, Sabine, uh, thank you for the hearts for Coach Jess. Shay Shay says, hi, Jess, with three hearts. And, of course, uh, you got uh, a comment from Cher. Cher says we can control our patients. I believe that's what she's saying there. Mm -hmm. uh, and she gives a heart with that. She gave you two thumbs up before. Uh, we're talking about a number of different things because this is literally, Coach, a live group chat. This was never meant to be where Coach Jess sits and gives a doctrinal speech uh, <laughs> on mental health diatribe of information <laughs> i'm just making up words can't wait to play scrabble i'm gonna make a bunch of words up you got this. uh and i'm gonna win every time uh say hello <laughs> to narc survivor love and life he's here oh big hello to him schoolboy uh hugh is in uh we are back on the air today with episode number six we have uh so much more to come uh your way uh every other week on a saturday at 1 p.m. my time here in California, 4 p.m. for my dear friend uh, in Canada. Uh, this is a Cali Canada California connection on mental health. Our main objective is to have a live group chat with multiple subjects and conversations going on that can be positive, informative, and encouraging. And because I'm here, they're going to be goofy every now and then. But for those who of you who have just joined and you didn't, you had no idea of what took place a little bit earlier. 
Coach, will you please tell them what we're going to be doing next time? <laughs> I'm already laughing and I haven't even said it. Can you please tell them we made up a show for next week, for the next, uh, next time we get together? And Coach, we just <laughs> made it up. And Coach, tell us a little bit and then I'll jump in before we, uh, we're going to have to go pretty soon. We've gone a total of 50 minutes, 49 minutes and 50 some odd seconds. But tell them what we're going to be doing next time we get together because they get to participate in a different yeah. way. But go yeah, ahead. It's, uh, it's going to be more like a round robin style where um, anybody who wants to participate from the audience is going to be able to bring in uh, a psychology or mental health, mental wellness term or word or phrase even I think we can allow. Um, if there's something you want to know more about or talk about, it's going to be a good opportunity to put that out there. Um, I think we're going to spin a wheel or pick my hat or something. <laughs> I'm going to come up with something. I'm, I really am. I'm, I'm thinking. I got a so couple cool. of weeks. There I got to go. come up with something. I'll test it out. And we are going to have the opportunity for you. Excuse me. You're going to be able to have the opportunity. This is the plan for you to call into the show. And uh, we will pipe uh, the sound in via Instagram where everyone can hear you on social media. Uh, we're going to be able to work that out. Uh, we'll see what we're going to do there. Um, the other thing is, is that we need you to, if you want to participate, if you want to participate, you can send uh, that request to participate to our production company, Rhythm Entertainment 85 at gmail.com. So send an email in and say that you would like to participate in the Coach Jess show, uh, the next Coach Jess show. Uh, and what's the name of it again? I just like you saying it. <laughs> Mental Wellness Improv. Mental Wellness Improv will be the Coach Jess show the next time you, you come around. And we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to be getting to Tootie Pooper 2021-2021 in a moment uh, on a subject. Uh, but I just want everyone to know, if you want to participate in the next Coach Jess show, we're going to have this little game that we're going to play. Everyone can play in this live group chat in which you toss a word in and everyone gets to talk about it for a little bit and then someone else tosses their word in. And of course, it's a family-friendly show. So uh, we don't want to know what the word is ahead of time, uh, but it needs to be mental health related. It needs to be mental health related. So if you would like to participate and you would like to have your word thrown in to the discussion, please contact Coach Jess and myself uh, via our production company, which is Rhythm Entertainment Productions. That's at rhythmentertainment85 at gmail.com. Uh, Coach Jess, uh, I'm quite sure you will be posting that, no doubt, feverishly uh, on your Facebook group and all the other things that you got going on, that, that empire that you sit on there in Canada. On my red <laughs> throne. <laughs> yeah. The queen. The queen. Hello, the queen. Hello, queen. Queen, 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 queen. Queen, 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 queen. <laughs> it well, must we gotta be record that for my soundboard. So you know what? <laughs> That's a pretty good idea. I gotta find a way to yeah get that to you. <laughs> and you know what? We uh, I have to tell you I have to tell everybody this because I keep looking down and around every now and then. It's because I have a cat in here with me. Oh, it, we just got a cat today, oh. and it's hiding in here, and. I believe I'm safe, and it's not like a demonic cat or anything like that. Like during the show, I just, it just, <laughs> it just, it just all of a sudden. <clears throat> but um, I do want to uh, say hello to uh, that looks like uh, Jan Janvanka. Oh man, I am so sorry. I, I really butcher everybody's name. Johnny Van Kampen. Yes, that sounds. Yeah. I love that name. Isn't that a beautiful name, it Coach? Is. Uh, thank you for for stopping in, or if you're still here. Uh, uh, welcome for, for uh, being here with us. Uh, I just want, again, everybody, if you're new here, uh, we were gone for a week. So this is our first show, getting the cobwebs out and back <laughs> to you. Um, normally, we're a lot more goofier than we are. I mean, serious than we are right now. Uh, but today, we wanted to look at what Tootie Pooper talked about, I believe, last time, mm -hmm. which was uh, what, almost a month ago that we were on. Uh, we were talking about, at the end of the show, it says bullying. Matter of fact, she has something for you there on the screen. Yeah, we were. On, we. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It says uh, on bullying, I was bullied through school and overcame. Now I feel that I am being bullied 
uh, know how do how do I deal with it? Is essentially is what she's saying. I think she meant uh, be, no or now instead of no. Okay. Now, how do I deal with it um, when it comes to being bullied? The key is uh, that we would like to know is who is the person that is bullying you? Yeah, and that, then that how dynamic, does it make you feel? Yeah, that dynamic is important to know, the relationship, uh, where yep. that's coming from. If it's a person yep. of authority or family member or friend or whatever. Yeah, it's hard. There. It's hard to really answer and go about it when we don't know the source uh, of it. Uh, but uh, feel free to let us know that, uh, Susan, uh, the source of that. Once we have an idea of the source, it makes it easy uh, to kind of navigate and come up with a game plan on how to navigate. But when it comes to being bullied, being mistreated by someone, what are some fundamental things a person can keep in mind? Um, uh, thank you, uh, Susan, uh, Tootie Pooper 2021 mentions uh, something to us on the screen. Feel free to maybe be a little bit more specific, whether it's just siblings alone, uh, family in general is kind of a, a general dynamics, uh, unless this is something coach that you want to talk to with, uh, her about in private. That's also an option as well, instead of here through this, this, uh, channel. Yeah, it can definitely, we can continue that conversation. But uh, like Paxton was saying, uh, depending on the family member, is it parents, is it siblings, is it children? Um, which kind of level of family do they fall on? Because again, that's going to help us with the dynamic of that relationship. Um, bullying in general is, is something that it, unfortunately a lot of people deal with in their life. Um, the first thing I would recommend is, is trying to think about like why they're doing this to you in particular is there uh, something going on with them where they feel like they need to lash out to make themselves feel better there are so many different reasons people do this um very very last most being who we are right like the we, we don't necessarily um, act a certain way to encourage bullying we don't necessarily ask to be bullied, right? We might just be in the person's environment while they're feeling a certain way or um, in, you know, in their trajectory if, you know, we work for them or something like that. Um, so in this instance, it's, it's your siblings and your mother. Um, and are they doing this kind of as a group or individually? If you can let me know that too. That might be a bit better. Um, yeah, and, and for those who will be watching this back later that cannot see the screen as we do in real time here being live, uh, she uh, coaches not just reading her mind. It actually is here on our screen. Uh, she highlighted to us that it's her family, her sister, mother, and brother uh, that she's re receiving that from. Uh, when it comes to siblings, um, one of one of the things that uh, I was able to get encouragement on from some others that have been on uh, uh, the shows here is being able to literally write out what that person does that 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 is bullying. Um, and if we can get a better idea of exactly what they're doing, we may be able to, to navigate around those by taking specific action toward each one. Uh, but coach, you, you know it better than I do. I do want to say this, um, since we're saying hello to everybody, uh, Ash, did I just lose my ton? I just said Ash. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> That's okay. I just went ghetto just for a moment. I'm so sorry. I, so I don't know where that came from. Ask. Anashka, I am sorry, my friend. I'm sorry, Anashka. Amazing. I don't know where I almost said Ash. I, I, that doesn't even. That's like you were uh, reading the sh in her name. Is, is, is that what I was doing, Money I, Penny? Money Penny, is that what I was doing? Short, short, I've become. I, oh, hey, <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> Guys, it's our first show back. We can goof off. <laughs> we'll be serious next time. Two more weeks. As Anashka is here, and feel free, if she's still here, to jump in at any moment. We're discussing bullying uh, that can take place, uh, something that can happen to individuals who are minding their own business by uh, people who just don't feel good about themselves. Sometimes both is what she says. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes both. Uh, feel free to, to like I said, uh, have this uh, discussion in private with uh, Coach Jess. She gives you, uh, um, please correct me if I say it wrong, uh, you give 30 minutes free consultation and what else? You just go ahead and let her know again. Yeah, and to anyone our, who would like to do that. 
Mm -hmm. For our audience here and anyone who is connected with them, uh, they get that free 30-minute consultation, but also a 30-minute coaching session for free. So take advantage of that. and Let's chat about that. Um, I want to get back to, to what Susan is asking. So it's important to know how, like, where this bullying is coming from. Is it, are they trying to bully you into an action? Are they trying to bully you into doing something that they want you to do? Are they trying to bully you into stop, like stopping something that they want you not to be doing? Um, are they trying to bully you into changing your values or morals? Are they trying to, like, what is, where is this intention coming from? Usually, if it's family, if it's not just a release of that toxicity, of that negativity, they want something to come of it. So it's, a, it's, it's almost a manipulation technique at that point, right? And, you know, if, if they are trying to bully you into doing something by, you know, taking away their respect for you or taking away their love for you or taking away, you know, affection for you, it's important to ask yourself if, if the opinions of those people who would do something like that are so important to you that you would change those values and morals, that you are willing to do what it is that they want you to do. If it is a situation where, I know in different cultural uh, cultural areas and, and with different cultural values, um, family dynamic can be quite different. So it really depends on what your goal for this is. Is your goal, like, for instance, is the bullying to the extent where you would be willing to cut off contact to ensure that stops? Is that even something possible for you in your life? Um, so there, as Paxton's saying, there's so many different dynamics and different perspectives that we need to look at to make sure that this is something you can deal with in a healthy way. Um, writing out what is going on and what is happening, as Paxton said, will allow you to get a bit more clarity on the situation things can be oftentimes difficult to sit down and just think about and ponder so in those instances writing things down if you need to do it you know um, a timeline if you need to do it with the major things that they've done to you um, write all of those things out okay so you live together so this is something then that is not really escapable because it's something that you have to deal with um, i would recommend writing down what it is that they are doing, what the bullying behavior is, and what you feel their intention behind it is. Um, think about that a little bit, Susan. If you can't get it into the chat here before the conversation ends today, DM that to me and we can go over that a little bit. Um, I know we have had a call in the past, but um, we, can, we can definitely DM and chat a little bit about that further if that's what you need, um, just to get a bit more clarity. But writing things down allows you to take a bit of a step back and look at it with fresh eyes. And uh, it, it can help you bring out some information and things that you already have, um, have done there. So please try that. That is a really good recommendation from Paxton. Um, and that's for any situation, any difficult situation you're dealing with. It can be really difficult to just sit and think. We need to see things visually sometimes. We need to be able to move things around and categorize and look at lists and uh, you know, weigh pros and cons and things like that. So writing things down is always a really good idea to get more clarity. One of the one of the beneficial joys that I get is being able to have so many different people on uh, the shows that uh, uh, we get to put on a Narc Abuse TV network. And uh, it's almost a running theme from every uh, coach. Uh, it is something you highlighted uh, in, in our show, our original show we talked about journaling and so forth uh to go beyond just what we're feeling but to write out what's actually happening and when we write out what's actually happening uh sometimes we will see that we have labeled it correctly and we know what we're looking at and we have as it were a recipe to work from or ingredients to move forward um and it may prove to be that beneficial for susan as she works with you if she so chooses to uh, she's able to work with you uh, because we appreciate that you are allowing yourself to be vulnerable in real time and talk about this situation, uh, Susan. Very important. But when it comes to bullying from family, sister, mother, brother, sometimes live together, uh, well, we can't paint a beautiful picture to give a prescription to support you. Uh, 
uh, some more information needs to be given background. And I really think that uh, with you offering uh, those services to her for free, uh, as you do through this show, many are able uh, to get some perspective so that they can move forward and be able to live in a peaceful and tranquil life. Uh, because then we can come up with a game plan. I want to throw something your way uh, before we have to end the show. We have gone an hour and four minutes. And normally we go an hour and five minutes. Uh, but could you do this for me? Because I'm going to do this. Here we go. <laughs> I say a word. And it, it pops into my head. And then you say what you think when it pops into your head. Okay. And we're going to go, we're going to go as fast as we can now. Right. Okay. Okay. You guys know our, our shows are not scripted, but here we go. <laughs> Just, okay. I'm not looking at nothing. I'm not, there's nothing, nothing up my sleeve. Baby. <laughs> nothing up my sleeve. Okay. Have sleeves. So you ready? <laughs> I got sleeves. The sleeves, right? What do you think this is? Uh, don't make, don't, there. don't, don't make me pull out my flabby arms. Okay. Show me so here we go. Is. So <laughs> see, uh, that's funny. <laughs> I, I have a sign that says "Take me to the beach." I think I'll bring it here for the next show and put it behind me. I used to, I used to have it on the show when I first got started, before I got a microphone <laughs> and and all of my other stuff. Okay, so here we go. Ready? We're gonna play this. We're gonna play this game. Okay, right, let's do all it. All right. You sure you're ready? I'm no ready. No cards, no nothing. Shake it all Whatever in pops head. into my head, you got to say what is in your head. No, don't worry about it. Everybody else is gonna leave the show because they're bored. <laughs> but but this is our first show back. The next show will be so much better. So much better. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Here we go. We're, okay, we're going to play this game I'm making up as I go. This game is called The Coach Jess Round Robin. Okay, I don't know what that means. It just blew your ears out. Okay. <laughs> hey, I can do this because it's free. Amazing. All right. <laughs> it's free TV here. Okay. <laughs> First word. First word. Now you got to say it as quickly as you can, as simple as possible. All right. Here we go. First word. Toxic. On. Can you say it louder into the mic? What are you like trying to whisper to your to the man in your life? Don't. Um. <laughs> <gotta> do... <laughs> what did <laughs> What did you say? Pond. I don't know why. Did you just say P O N D? Yeah. Do you understand how this works? We're having a mental <laughs> health game. This is this is not like we're just sitting there playing Pictionary. The first word that came into my head. Oh, okay. No. Okay. All right. You're right. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. We don't want to have we don't have a family dispute right here in front of everybody. We'll we'll keep this stuff private. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. So that was it. Consider that the test round. All right. That kind of went like this. All right. Now here we go. That was that was a test one. Here we go. Real real thing. Now here we go. First word pops into my head. You go first word pop in your head. We keep going uh, until the music starts to play to play us out. So here we go. First word. I'm going to say to you is vampire. Delinquent. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? All right. Forget it. No, next <laughs> word. Next. I'm just going to, I got to, I got I to go through it. I just got to go through it. We just this is like, give up. We I got to breathe. Warm up. No, okay, no, you got to warm up. No, you got to warm up. Don't be trying to put that on me. Okay, so here we go. Down, Next word. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. See, that's you get. You're trying to act like you're drinking a soda and you know you got vodka in there. All right, so here we go. Next word. Next word. Here we go. Next word. Triangulation. Pinpoint. <laughs> you're a coach. <laughs> You're also a human. <laughs> oh yeah, obviously. Okay, so triangulation. I mean, I gotta write these back when I watch the show back. Okay, so triangulation pinpoint. Okay, no, that's okay. All right, all right. Red flags. Bad news. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a so delayed reaction. Bad news. I was okay, just gonna say bad. Good dating, but... good dating advice. Bad news. <laughs> Red flags. Bad news. Bad news. Bad news moto. Okay, so <laughs> all right. So bad news. Okay, here we go. We're ending we're gonna end the show now. We're in the show on two. Here we go. On these two things. Here we go. I'm gonna say one and then we're gonna do that and we're gonna do the next one. Here we go. Next word is love. Forever. 
okay, all right. I know that's the way you talk to your man up there in Canada, but don't be talking to me and like myself. that. <laughs> don't and myself. Talk. Whatever. So okay. No, oh, look at you. Oh, man. Ooh, that was so beautiful. Okay, <laughs> next. Last word. Last word for the day for this show. Our first show back in quite a while. We have, oh, what is it? <laughs> I'm flopping it. <laughs> <laughs> the screen. You know what's so bad is people are coming in going like, you know, they used to have a decent show. <laughs> Lucy, get the people, Lucy. Lucy, <laughs> look at the people. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. Ricky. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Hey. <laughs> it's a Desi Lou production for you. Okay, so here we go. All right, last word. Whatever pops into your head, and we're ending episode six this way, because episode seven is going to be so much better. <laughs> <laughs> has to be. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trust me, it's got to be. The free TV can only go so lower than this. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Next thing, I'm going to say a word. You're going to say what's next. I mean, the next word. Here we go. Next word. The next word for you to say whatever's on your mind. Yeah, you're trying to clear your mind. Trying to, trying to <laughs> I see it in your eyes. You're I'm trying to get ready. really hard. You're trying to go like, don't think that, don't think that, don't, don't think, think that. <laughs> empty, empty, empty brain, empty brain. <laughs> okay, here we go. The next word that most people are shooting for. This is what they want in life. I'm going to say it, and then you're going to say whatever comes into your Canadian brain. Okay? Okay. Affection. Strength. That was beautiful. Okay. The rest of them we can throw out in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. You ended it. Worked. You okay. stuck the landing, young lady. You I told you, I just needed a word. landing. <laughs> <laughs> like 20 words later. <laughs> I'm ready now. Can I say the vows? Yes. I'm ready to get married. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. All right. We did. Oh, you, did you did good. You did good, boss. <laughs> you did. You're the, you're the, you're the, you're the top. You're the top. Oh. You really are. You really are. Okay. You really are. You're Canadian tops. You're Canadian tops. Is that an A? <laughs> you're the, yeah, I was going to, I was going to do it, <laughs> but I was waiting for you to see if you did it. You did it too. Yeah. You know, we talked about that. Before we ever we started this, we did. We, we talked about did. I was waiting to kind of stick that in the show at some point. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. All right. So um, thank you very much, everyone that has stayed for this. Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> I, I just want to say one thing. One thing. <laughs> just, <laughs> just one. Listen, uh, I've enjoyed myself. This has been fun. I love being your, your little guy in the booth and engineer for you to do your show. Uh, we started from uh, nobody paying us any attention to at least three people now. And I just want you to know. <laughs> My Saturday is so much better every other Saturday because I get to sit here and watch you be serious and I get to goof off. Uh, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Any, any last words for everybody? I love you all. Thank you so much for joining us and for uh, being resilient through the ridiculousness that is our show. Um, I missed you all. I really did. And I'm so glad to be back. And I'm super pumped for our next show in two weeks where we're going to do the, the round robin, the mental wellness improv. It's going to be oh, fantastic. All of these wonderful ideas always stem from you guys and a desire and passion to make mental health and wellness more accessible. So thank you so much for joining us, for sharing with your friends and family and loved ones. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Boss, you called it. Everybody, we're out. See you later. Stay out of trouble, everybody. Stay safe. We'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>